It's criticism Bloomberg has faced before and is reportedly prepping for right now with his debate team in anticipation he will be on the stage in Nevada Wednesday. So the man who's clearly made racist statements, the man who wants to erase the Second Amendment out of the United States Constitution, the man who is now attacking the very free market system that made him rich is going to be front and center during the debate. Isn't it amazing what about $60 billion will do? Joining me now from Reston, Virginia, from the Media Research Center, director of MRC-TV, Eric Shiner. Eric, Bloomberg has some explaining to do, I think. You know, and, and it's not so much these, the mainstream media is calling them gaffes. I don't believe they're gaffes at all. I believe that they are windows to the soul. For example, uh, telling uh, poor people that, hey, he's smarter than they are. He can tax them into changing their behavior for their own good. Oh, he likes a good regressive tax. That's what he said in uh, 2018 at the International uh, Monetary Fund meeting. You know, he, uh, he talks about regressive taxes, explaining things like his soda tax that he's pushed forth in the in the past. And he says regressive taxes hurts poor people more. It has a bigger impact. So you can affect their behavior better that way. You can change their behavior because he knows better and he gets to tell people what to do. Um, that's exactly how he looks at taxes. You have that. You have uh, the. You have the earlier interviews over the audio that leaked from the Aspen Institute about uh, taking minority kids and throwing them against the wall to make sure that they don't have weapons. There's a lot of history with Bloomberg. Yep. It's coming out, and that will come out again on the debate stage, I'm sure. Meantime, Bernie Sanders is out there trying to hawk his ideology as democratic socialism. That is an oxymoron if I ever heard one, because you can't be a democracy and a, and a socialist society at the same time. They are mutually exclusive. In other words, Bernie Sanders is out there hawking a lie, and he's hoping the American people will swallow the lie. Hey, like you said in 2019, uh, you know, this is the path that he believes in, the path of democratic socialism. It's the path, let's use his words here, of justice. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the point of justice and fair, because what's more fair and more loving and more justice than coveting what your neighbor has and making sure you can take some of that and spread that around? What's less, uh, you know, what's more divisive than just blaming the 1%, although he admits if you make more than $29,000, you'll see a raise in taxes to cover his health care, which he still can't figure out how that's all going to completely be paid for. Yeah, this is his path. This is what he sees as the future. And a lot of people are buying into it, it seems, which is a little scary. It is scary. And he's a mastermind. Uh, he thinks he's a mastermind, just like Michael Bloomberg. They both believe, Sanders and Bloomberg, they both believe that they're smarter than us and they know how to use our money better. Meantime, you have Nancy Pelosi, who who agrees with all this stuff. And I don't know exactly who she's rooting for, Bloomberg or Sanders or Biden or whoever. It doesn't really matter. But in her minuscule little mind, she can't picture a Donald Trump presidency in a second term. Well, let me help her. Let me help her. Because there's going to be at least one, maybe two Supreme Court uh, justices added to the Supreme Court from uh, a Donald Trump second term. I think GDP would be up near around four, uh, maybe five percent. And then one more thing, Eric, wall to wall, wall. You know, down along the border, I think we could finish that thing in a second term. Absolutely. But like you said, Nancy Pelosi's mind, it's its like a dark alley. You don't want to go in there alone, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> look, you know, she has a problem dealing with reality. This is the same interview. She doesn't see Trump getting reelected. She says, despite the headlines, he's not acquitted because she says so. And she thinks the Democrats are offering better options. Well, he is the odds on favorite. I checked the uh, presidential odds, not the polls, but the Vegas odds. That's where the money is going. And President Trump is the odds on favorite. But also, I think the mood of the country is working in the favor of the president of the United States for re-election right now.